Hello everyone and welcome to the Clinical Trials Project Management Series provided by the Case Western Reserve Clinical Translational Science Collaborative. This series will be presented across four modules. We began the series with an introduction to project management in clinical trials. In modules two and three, we will go into the details about the project management life cycle and the project manager's role at each stage. Finally, we'll cap off the program by presenting resources for project managers and study teams, which are available from the CTSC. Today, we'll discuss execution, monitoring and control, and closure phases of the project management life cycle. The objectives of this module are to describe the application of project management practices during the execution, monitoring and control, and closure phases of the project life cycle. Examples of tools and resources are included. Let's execute our study. We built our Rube Goldberg machine during the planning phase. During the execution phase, we get to set it into motion. The execution phase starts with site initiation. If you've worked on industry sponsored studies, you're probably familiar with the term site initiation visit or SIV. The project manager should work with the study team to coordinate the SIV. During the meeting, the study team is trained on the protocol, including any study specific procedures and the database. The regulatory binder with all necessary essential documents needs to be organized. All necessary supplies and materials for study conduct are inventoried and organized. Take note of the expiration date on any materials, what needs to be replaced and when. Finally, the monitor will conduct their initial review as written in the monitoring plan. They will issue a monitoring report to document their visit, which lists any observations that need to be resolved. Another key element of the startup process is ensuring that all applicable operational processes are completed and ready to go. When our first subject comes in to participate, we want the dominoes to fall into place. Collaborate with the research administration team to understand the workflows involved in research operations. For example, the research billing process, funding for the study, or any contracts. After the SIV, we're ready to conduct the study. Thank goodness for our amazing study coordinators. While the coordinator and investigator are likely the ones doing the heavy lifting during execution, it is important that the project manager stay connected to what is happening with the study. A routine combination of team meetings and emailed updates about how the study is going will help perpetuate that collaborative momentum you developed in the planning stage. Is our recruitment strategy working? Is the workflow of study visits efficient? Are monitoring visits being completed as planned? And is that schedule working for us? Maintaining open lines of communication is key to the success of the project and will play an important role in the monitoring and control phase. If only everything went according to the plans we laid out at the beginning, but studies evolve over time because of new information, subject safety considerations, or lagging enrollment, we need to be agile and able to roll with the punches. That protocol sounded perfect when we went over it during the planning stage, but now that we're executing it, some things aren't working the way we thought they would. Maybe we need a protocol amendment. Perhaps we have a corrective and preventative action plan to act on. Maybe a global pandemic hit and we had to make major changes to our operations to compensate. Whatever it may be, clinical trials are dynamic and the project manager should be prepared to guide the team through changes to study conduct. Let's move on to monitoring and control. While the study is being executed, we are also actively in the monitoring and control phase. During this phase, we need to look at our big picture items once again. If we wait until the trial is over, we cannot manage risk and make sure we're meeting our study goals. We need ongoing communication to keep us all on the same page and accountable. The whole team needs to be involved in these discussions. Perspective from coordinators, investigators, and management are important to managing the study. Stakeholders should be kept informed about how we're doing and contacted if support or action on the stakeholders part is needed to keep things moving in the right direction. Are we sticking to the protocol? How are our risk management plans working out? Are there new risks that we need to look at? Are we meeting our timeline and study milestones? If not, why? And can we correct any issues? The monitoring element of this phase involves implementing the monitoring and risk management plans we developed during the planning phase. We'll observe study performance and make sure the plans we made are being carried out. 
we will use these observations to identify performance trends, such as enrollment rate, and risks, such as a PI change. We'll analyze this information during the control phase. The goal of control is to get a handle on our risks to quality, project performance, data integrity, and subject welfare. We look at the data we collected during monitoring and compare what actually happened against what we expected to happen. Are we performing better or worse than we expected? The difference is called a performance gap. What caused the difference? Conduct a root cause analysis to identify what really caused the discrepancy. Once we've identified our root cause, we'll develop a plan to fix it and prevent it from happening again, a corrective and preventative action plan, or CAPA. Root cause analysis and CAPA are team sports. All of the study team members involved need to participate in the process to identify the core issue and develop the CAPA. Monitoring and control is cyclical. After we've established our CAPA, we need to monitor its execution and make sure it was effective. If not, what do we need to tweak to fix it? How do we approach monitoring the study? We don't monitor only if we're about to be audited by the IRB or the FDA. It's an important element to ensuring quality and managing risk. We're going to look at the data from a variety of sources to make sure that we're capturing important issues. We wrote the monitoring plan during the planning phase. The study monitor is going to conduct their reviews during the execution and closure phases. They'll write monitoring reports, which the project manager should review along with other relevant members of the study team and follow up to ensure that observations are resolved. Yes, the monitoring report is going to identify little things that are easily fixed, but it will also identify larger issues, which may be indicative of a problem that needs to be controlled. What is the difference between monitoring and quality assurance? I like the analogy of a tree. Quality assurance is looking at the whole tree to see how it's growing and if there are systemic problems. Monitoring is looking at each individual branch to make sure it's growing correctly. Both are important to maintaining a quality and compliant study. QA activities may be included in your manual of operations, or perhaps it's a standard departmental function. As the project manager, observations from monitoring and QA are important data to review. It is ideal to use an electronic study database to your advantage beyond data collection. Use reporting capabilities to pull data on adverse events, protocol deviations, enrollment rates to analyze for trends. Let's take a look at these concepts in action by doing a deep dive into a hypothetical example of a very real risk to clinical trials, enrollment rate. During the initiation phase, the sample size calculation determined that we needed 24 subjects to power the study. During the planning phase, we established our anticipated enrollment rate at four subjects a month over the course of six months. We executed the study and started enrolling, documenting subjects that were consented in our study database and marking whether they went on to be randomized or if they withdrew or screen failed. We consented five subjects during the first four weeks. To monitor our progress after the first month of enrollment, the CTPM pulled an enrollment report from the database. According to the report, we consented and screened five subjects. Two went on to be randomized, one withdrew consent, and two others were screen failures. As part of our control process, the data tells us that we have a performance gap of two subjects in the first month. Why? Only one subject having withdrawn consent isn't indicative of a trend yet. That's something to watch, but let's not worry about that now. Let's do a root cause analysis and pull the data to identify what caused each of these two subjects to screen fail. In reviewing the source data, we see that both subjects had blood glucose levels over 100. Our protocol eligibility criteria says that subjects have to have a blood glucose within normal limits at screening. Why is the protocol written that way? According to the PI, there is an increased risk with the study drug in diabetics, so she set the inclusion criteria to be very conservative out of concern for subject safety. There's our root cause. The inclusion criteria is restrictive for patient safety. Now that we have our root cause, we need to see if there's anything that we can do to change it. There may not be, and we may need to revise our enrollment rate expectations. But it is worth asking, can this criteria be revised without impacting patient safety or study integrity? Let's have the experts review. The Data Safety Monitoring Board looks at it and says that we could safely increase the inclusion criteria to state up to 120. The team makes a plan to amend the protocol and study documents, 
submit to FDA and IRB, and train everyone on the changes. Next month, we'll repeat the process and see if this change has had a positive impact on enrollment. Finally, we've reached the closure phase. Closure starts when we have finished last subject last visit. All subjects are off study, no more visits are happening. We can see the finish line. We need to wrap up the final action items of the execution phase to get ready for closeout. Make sure all CRFs are complete, queries are resolved. Review remaining inventory of study supplies and determine what should be done with the materials. Make sure drug or device accountability records are in order. Go over the regulatory binder to make sure that all of the essential documents are filed and up to date. For FDA regulated studies, be prepared to contact investigators to get a final financial disclosure form one year after the study closes. Make sure you retain their contact information. Understand plans for long term storage. Are paper documents going to be sent off site for archival? Where are they going? How will we retain access to electronic files? Now we're prepared for the monitor to complete their study termination visit. They will tie up any loose ends with the CRFs, make sure that the regulatory binder is in order and that the IRB closeout report has been submitted. They'll also do a final reconciliation of the drug or device accountability records and disposition of any remaining product. Once all of the CRFs have been monitored and queries resolved, this is typically the point where the investigator signs off on the data collection forms. Then the database manager will lock the database to make sure that no data is changed or removed. Then they will export the data and provide it to the investigator and statistician for analysis. The investigators will most likely prepare a manuscript to submit to scientific journals for publication. If the study was an applicable clinical trial, remember that results reporting is required on clinicaltrials.gov within one year. If your study is also FDA regulated, you need to submit a final study report to the FDA. Discuss plans with the IND or IDE with the sponsor investigator. And if they do not plan to conduct another protocol under the same IND or IDE, include a request to withdraw the IND IDE with the final report to FDA. As with every stage, it is important to update stakeholders and the study team throughout the closure phase. Stakeholders will be especially interested in the outcome, so make sure to connect them with meaningful information. Take some time to celebrate as a team. Recognizing the contributions of individuals and the accomplishments of the team is very rewarding and much deserved. Take some time to reflect on your role as the clinical trial project manager. What went well and what would you do differently next time? Taking stock will help you improve and grow in your project management role. Let's review our key takeaways for this module. During the execution phase, the team will set their plans into motion. Make sure everyone starts on the right foot by holding a comprehensive site initiation visit that ensures everyone is trained on the study, understands their role, and you have all of the materials necessary to start enrolling subjects. Change is inevitable, and a project manager needs to be prepared to lead the team through changes to the study. The monitoring and control phase runs concurrently with execution. This phase is cyclical. We observe performance and identify risks and trends to monitor study conduct. Using that information, we control risks to the project by conducting root cause analysis and developing or implementing a corrective and preventative action plan. We identify performance gaps and work with the team to develop plans to close them. Then we monitor the effectiveness of our plans and make necessary adjustments. During the closure phase, we're going to prepare our study for closeout and complete the termination visit. Inform and update relevant project stakeholders on status relevant to their role. Celebrate success with the team and reflect on your experience as the project manager. In our final module, we will review resources available through the Case Western Reserve Clinical Translational Science Collaborative. Thank you.